Hey guys, it's Brentman117. Welcome back to the channel and the review video for my latest custom build titled The Chief's Wardrobe. If you haven't had a chance to check out the build video for this yet, I've linked it in the description below. And if you're wondering why I'm reviewing my own builds or my own products, well, I guess the answer to that would be because I think you want me to. I generally get hundreds of comments and questions on my custom builds, which I do my best to answer. But ultimately, if you've got a question about that build, you're unlikely to want to sift through hundreds of comments to see if somebody's asked your question and if I've actually replied to it. So it makes sense to me to be able to carry out a review video for these mocks where I can try and anticipate the questions you're likely to ask. And it also gives me a chance to explain a few things about the build in a bit more detail, like the inspiration for the build, some of the design choices and some of the building techniques that may or may not be that clear from the actual build video. I've also prompted you to ask any questions that you might want me to answer on the build video, to which I will do my best to try and cover as many of those as I can during the course of this review. So the inspiration for this build actually comes from a Lego set, the Iron Man Hall of Armour set. Whilst I don't have that set and probably never will because the actual build of that set doesn't really appeal to me, but I really like the idea and I've for a long time wanted to create something in a similar fashion for the Master Chief and Mega Construct. So that's the justification for why I've put this build together. Some people have asked why am I doing it now when I'm in the middle of supposed to be building the Ultimate AA gun. Simple reason there is I'm actually waiting on a resupply for a few specialist pieces from Mega Construct. So whilst I wait for that to arrive, I decided I'd uh, get this out of the way because I've wanted to do it for a long time. So it seemed a good opportunity to get this done. To cover a few of the questions I got asked on the build video, we'll take a look at it now. So some people had mentioned, how does it all fit on? So basically this section here is from the countdown set, which is just on a spinning piece, which is from the Wolverine sets. And these parts are from the countdown set. So when you put those on there, that will then spin. Although this doesn't actually have to spin. This is simply to keep this section centralized. The diameter of this fits perfectly into this section here, which is why we've got all of these two by fours sticking off at this distance, because this orange piece then fits into here perfectly, which stops the platform wobbling from side to side. It's the actual wheels that do the turning side of it. So once you've got that placed back on, it doesn't then want to move around. So once it's on, it doesn't want to move from side to side and it spins nice and freely. So another question I got was, is there a mechanism to make it turn? No, there's not. I did actually intend on making a mechanism with a wheel off to the side that as you turned it, this would turn. But frustratingly, the, the distances weren't right here and I couldn't get the wheel that I was going to use to turn it to actually turn it. So in the end, I decided to give up on that idea because I figured it just wasn't worth the hassle and the time to try and incorporate that. So you just have to spin it manually. But of course, you could incorporate some sort of dial on the top to spin it or you could gear it here and then you could modify it if you really wanted to. Another question I got was uh, why didn't I use tiles in these sections here? So there's a gap between here these window pieces and these black pieces here. It's because these window pieces are designed to be used on an angle so they would come across this way. So they go cross studs so each stud is too far apart to actually put these pieces down on top of them. So the way I got around that on the bottom was I used a one by two jumper plate on the bottom, which then goes into one central stud hole on the bottom. And at the top, they just can't go any further back because of what's behind this. There's one of these black ones behind there. So they all lock them into place so they stay nice and straight, but they are being supported by one stud underneath. If I wanted to try and put tiles on here, they'd all stick out this way at an angle and then you'd lose that nice clean line you've got there of the shape as it rotates around. So I did look at it, but it didn't look right. So I left it as it was. Another question people have asked is uh, some of the parts that I've used. Some people said they haven't seen the parts or they didn't know they existed. Well, these parts here, which are obviously essential for creating this round turntable shape, these gray parts, they're from the countdown set and the black parts are also from the countdown set. So it's only because I've got so many countdown sets, I was able to use all these pieces because I'm not aware of these coming in any other set. So if you don't have lots of them, countdown sets that is, I think you'd struggle to build this. And in regards to all these grill pieces, they're from all of the 
assault on high ground sets that I've collected over the years as well. So I was able to just use those as many as I needed. I did actually intend on originally carrying these gray ones on all the way around so you could have more suits of armor, but I only had five of these gray ones. So then I decided to use the black ones and have the black ones more of an entranceway into this central area. I envisioned these two pieces here as being doors into a computer area which probably controls all of the equipment needed to maintain these Mjolnir suits whilst they're on their rigs in storage. I also had some other questions about the actual rig section of the build. Now this is from the Infinity Armor Base set, which is again, it's a relatively small basic set. I have modified this, I've made it wider, simply because when it's at its normal length, it's very hard to get a figure's arms at this angle. So I just widened it out by about two studs, which then made it fit the actual minifigure a lot better, which just looks more natural to what you'd expect to see in game. Now, I did contemplate expanding this out and putting some computers here. And I also toyed with the idea of using the prototype suit off to the side on another rig. The only reason I didn't was because it, it started to clutter the mock a little bit. Obviously, you could put an add on there and it would probably look fine. But for me personally, I just felt that sometimes less is more. So for this video here and for this mock, I decided to leave it as it was. But obviously, through personal choice, if they did produce this as a set or you wanted to build it, really the options are endless. You could add as much or as little as you want to it. So another commonly asked question was uh, the choice of figures that I used for the armor. Now, my original intention was to have a figure for Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 4, Halo 5, and then Halo 6 on the rig. But I discovered with the help of Gabe from G Custom Creations that I don't actually own a Combat Evolved Master Chief. In fact, I didn't know which games most of the chiefs that I owned were from. I had to have a lot of help from Gabe. So he's helped me out with that to uh, try and rectify the situation. So as you can see now, as I spin it around, we've got empty spot for the Combat Evolved chief because I don't have one. In spot number two, we've got the chief from the Chief versus Arbiter pack for Halo 2. For Halo 3, we've got the Warthog Run chief. Then for Halo 4, we've got the Broadsword Midnight Strike Chief. And then Halo 5, we've got the UNSC Infinity Chief. And then if we just spin the whole display around on the rig, we've got Halo Infinite Pelican Inbound Chief, which is my personal favorite chief of the infinite line so far which i'm sure will be to the disappointment to gabe who prefers the defense point showdown muddy boot chief which is probably a close second for me another thing that people commented on on the build video was this figure that i'd put here to replace the combat evolve chief now this is from the 10-year aerial ambush set and it's listed on the box as a Spartan 2 in Mark IV armor. Now, from what I understand, the Combat Evolve Chief is wearing Mark V armor. Now, somebody said that this guy shouldn't be here because the Chief didn't wear this armor because he starts off in Mark V armor in Combat Evolved. But maybe you guys can help me out here. Would he not have worn this armor at some point if it was a previous generation of armor? After all, he'd been a Spartan for a long time before we saw him in Combat Evolved. So although, I don't know, we may never have seen him in this armor or he may simply have never have worn this armor. But I would have thought it would make sense that if other Spartans wore this armor, surely he would have as well, as all Spartan 2s were produced at the same time. So feel free to educate me in the comment section below on that one. Either way, I do like that figure. So yeah, he went in there and that's why he was in there for the build video, because I just think it's a really nice figure. There's one final comment I wanted to address before I end out the video, and that's the amount of people that have stated that they wish this was an official set and how much they'd love to buy it or they would buy it if it was an official set, which is obviously very flattering from my behalf. And I agree, I think this would be a very good official set. And that's one of the reasons I tried not to go too crazy with the build. It has to be viable. So if you think that this would be a good official set and you'd be interested, don't be afraid to make some noise in the comments. 
We know Mega Constructs follow my builds and read the comments on my builds. And we also know that Mega Constructs are big on giving the fans what they want. So if they believe that this would be a good seller and there's a lot of interest in it, who knows what could happen? And one of the reasons I think this could be a very popular set is what I'm about to show you. Although this mock is called the Chief's Wardrobe, it doesn't have to be the Chief's Wardrobe. This is a very universal set. You can put anything in here, your favourite fire team, or maybe you could put Noble Team in here. As you can see, it can cater for any Spartans, almost any figures, or UNSC figures at least. If your favourite team is Blue Team, then you can put Blue Team on there to display them. Or maybe even Fire Team Osiris. If you have your favourite Fire Team, this makes an absolutely fantastic display piece to be put on the shelf where your favourite Fire Team can be displayed in all its glory. And the fact that you can spin it around just puts the icing on the cake. So that just about covers it for my review of the build. I appreciate all the positive feedback I've had from the build video. That was very gratefully received. And I'm glad you like the build and the mock so much. And as I say, if you do want to see this go further, then don't be afraid to make some noise in the comment section. Maybe Mega Constructs will listen. And that's me pretty much done. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time.